Right, uh, what we're having a look at uh, is fundamental analysis, looking at the state of the companies that you may or may not invest in, and not just the state of the companies, because there's so much more to the basic fundamental analysis than that, and that is the against technical and trading which you've done, but looking at the economic environment. Are you going to buy economy when you see the contract companies, the, the uh, sorry, can I start that again? Are you going to buy anything when you see the economy is contracting? That's the first important decision. Look at that, that economic environment, look at the growth sector, look at the area in which there is uh, hopefully progress, and just say, do, do they have a business-friendly rating? Look at current markets, look at performance results. What are performance results? Look at the state of the profits of the company, not just that on its own, but versus anyone else in the same sector. If you're going to be a buyer, make sure the market as a whole, the market, the economy has to leave it, lead it, the economy is growing, the market is likely to be going up, the sector you're interested in is doing well. You know, is there any point in, in, in buying a motor car factory shares now when you see that sales growth are slowing to the lowest they've been since the, since the recession? Now, really, one has to look at all of these, these factors and just see how it comes out on a performance rating. All right, uh, to go on from there then, uh, we started here in blue. So that was the easy to do, friendly sort of uh, part of it. And then we come to the beware, danger, hence in red. Really, this is the important part of it's not just what to do, it's what not to do. That's important. So let's just see where we're operating. We're operating in the emerging market universe. What are emerging markets? Those are reflecting countries which are industrial, which are not heavily industrialized. Okay, uh, if we look at, at uh, developed markets, those that have a developed state of industry and commerce. All right, emerging markets, that's where we are. This year to date, in dollar terms, why in dollar terms? Because the biggest investors in the world deal in dollars. That's how they measure their returns. We're talking about global investors. This index started at 100 at the beginning of the year. Where are we now? How does our market look? It's at 96.9. Despite the fantastic performance, we're down year to date. When foreigners have a look, they don't just say, can we get in today and out tomorrow or next week or whenever? They say, shall we take a view of this economy? What's it doing? If the, if the, if the, if the JSC should reflect it, not growing too quickly, is it? And that's very important. Let's look at other uh, emerging markets. China, the best performer economically, their, their index is at 96.8. Russia, 92. India, 90. Brazil, 79. Well, these are all leading factors, leading countries in the, uh, the uh, emerging market universes, MSCI, uh, Morgan Stanley Capital Index, and the, the sector as a whole is at 95. So what does it say? We're not at a strong growth area. You have a look at developed markets. Year to date, the leading markets are all quite well ahead. Uh, the BRICS average, and here we are, uh, BRICS, you've got Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Strangely, for once, we're leading the group. That is a, a, a treat, and it's quite unusual. The average down 9%. So take this into account. If you consider yourself, you're not just looking at being a trader who's buying and selling and buying and selling short term. Look at it in the bigger environment. Look at it in managing assets. On a global basis, isn't that where to go? That is how to manage big funds, have an impact on economies, have an impact on markets in the big scale to, to de be dealing, not in small amounts, but in really significant amounts in international currencies. That's what to look at. So where would you go to? Would you go to emerging markets? Should we expect big new foreign portfolio flows into South Africa? We may be doing the best in the BRICS group and the em whole emerging market universe, but is that the place to go? If you are managing a multi-billion dollar fund in the US or London or wherever, would you be coming here? Unlikely. Take it into account when you're looking at the universe in which you're operating. All right. At the moment, however, you're operating on the Sunlam uh, iTrade uh, platform, and that's pretty short term. So we just make the most of that and see what we can say about that. All right. Let's look at the JSE. You're buying. Is it fair value? Let's look at the market as a whole. Fair value, what's that? It's, an, it's a level at which you expect 
profits to grow and hence share prices to advance. The top 40 PE ratio at the moment is 21 times. That's high. If you don't know, that's heck of a high. Long-term average is 15. In the 2008 recession, it went down to nine. That was value. That was real value. That was when they said you should have been really buying everything you could when the blood was running in the streets. And for sure, metaphorically speaking, it was. And that is it. That's what to look for. So take this into account. Long-term average 15, we're at 21. Not great value now. You've just got to hope liquidity keeps pumping because if that stops, boy, this party's going to stop. The financial and industrial index at 18 times. That's probably 30% higher than the long-term average. Markets globally, what has kept them going? We all know that. You were talking about that off air just a little while ago. Excess liquidity, quantitative easing, pumping liquidity, huge amounts of cash into the financial sectors of economies. It hasn't gone into bricks and mortar and machinery and, and production, and, and uh, it's gone into financial assets. And what has happened? Quantitative easing has produced what we now refer to as the new normal. Is it normal? No, it's very abnormal. It can't go on indefinitely because debts, mountains, are being created and they have to be repaid at some stage. Bear this in mind when you decide, shall I bet the ranch on this position? I'd just be a bit careful about that. There may be a, a, a mortgage which is getting more expensive on it. So, new normal, is it possibly bubble creation? You have to decide that. And when you do get bubbles, look how long they last. Japan's bubble peaked in 1989 with the Nikkei, their average, at 40,000. Where is it now? One third of that. And this is over tw 25 years later. Beware bubbles. Okay, what does it mean to you? Our market is more expensive than it's been for decades. Take it into account. Okay, economic recovery. Is it going up? Is it going sideways? Is it going down? We're not sure, but at the moment, it's the rate of growth is slowing. Take that into account. Last year, this year earned so much. This company earned so much. This, sh this year, it earned so much. Next year, that rate of growth may slow, or it may not be a rate of growth at all. Let's just look worldwide. Where are the leaders? Always look at the US. Why? Because it's over 20% of world GDP. If they're not growing, not likely to anybody else is doing anything exciting. Uh, in the second quarter, they, their average was uh, growth GDP up 2.5% on a year-on-year -year basis. China up 7.5%. It's what they're estimating uh, for the year as a whole. If they say they're going to do it, you can bet they're likely to do it. And looking at 8% next year, so it's going to be a major growth factor. What's it mean to us? Very important export destination, but not the most important. So we've got to bear in mind when we're looking at, at uh, uh, commodity producers, are our exports going in that direction? South Africa's growth. Look at the environment in which we're operating. We're looking at 1.8 to 2%. Gee, at the beginning of the year, when we got the budget, the minister confidently said, well, 3.2%, maybe a little bit below. Gee, it took him no time at all, and he was talking about 2.8%. Now, they're not sure we're going to make 2%. The, re the, the, the uh, governor of the Reserve Bank says 2%, but with downside risk. Phew, that's a serious comment from the most conservative banker in the country. Very important. Okay, so then you say, well, maybe 2%, 2.5%. Two, two What's it mean to any, country, any operation, any business operation? The population growth is 25 to 3%. What does that mean? It means, on average, everybody's getting poorer. What does that mean? There's going to be more demands on the government for social grants, for, for, for support. You can't let people starve, not in this day and age. You've got to support them. You've got to look after them. And so what you've got to say is, is this a good environment for rising profitability? So you'll say, well, OK, do I need all that? Yes, I think you should appreciate it. That's why that's printed in red. I think it's, I think it's very important. Okay, so let's go to the less vibrant areas now. Financial ratios. Okay, now I know you guys are mostly, and understandably, understandably because you're short-term traders looking at technical analysis. And I agree that it is very important. You can't do anything if you haven't checked the chart. But don't buy or sell anything till you know the state of that company, its operating, its operating environment, and its balance sheet. 
Okay, look at financial ratios. Are they above or below the long-term average, and why? Is it an environmental problem, or is it a specific company problem? That's important to know. Um, are they in a growth or contraction phase? You can just see that, just compare uh, uh, earnings over a period, or losses over a period. Um, look at the impact on corporate profits and costs. Look at the ripples that can come from it. You know, if a gold mine closes, that's tough on the gold mine. What about all the people who supply goods and, and, and uh, services to that mine? It creates a huge amount of unemployment in industry if there's a gold mine strike. So just look at the bigger impact. Have a look at where that company is. Physically, geographically, where does it operate? If you were uh, uh, running a, a store in Rustenburg, what would you be doing? you say, my God, let those miners go back to work. Because there's a lot of mining activity there, and they're the guys who get paid every month. Okay, look at a balance sheet. You must look at a balance sheet. It's, you look at the assets, uh, look at the current assets, split them up, current and longer term. What are current assets? Assets which can be, can be converted into cash within a year. So easily converted to cash. If it's got no current assets, you think, shoo. If, there's, if their biggest client doesn't pay them for goods delivered, what do they do? If the bank's not feeling friendly, they're in trouble. So make sure they've got some current assets. Um, Non-current, that is a lifespan of over a year. Why is that important? To make sure that if they want to grow this company, they've got either got or got access to longer-term capital or loans. It's very important to say, can they go for growth, or are they stuck where they are? Okay, look at shareholders' equity. That's the company's total net worth. Just have a look. Take the assets and liabilities and make sure that it comes out in a black number and not in a red number. All right. Let's go on from there then, and we have a look at uh, a balance sheet. Why is it in red? It's very important. BS, off the record. It doesn't stand for bullshit. It stands for very, very important. It is a balance sheet. Read it, digest it, analyze it. Don't, you, you never buy a stock or sell a stock if you don't look at the chart. Don't do anything till you've looked at the balance sheet and profit and loss statement as well. I think that's important. Uh, the ratios. Ratios to look debt to equity fin gives you an, uh, uh, an idea of, of financial strength. Why? Because equity says how much money is there in the uh, have shareholders put into the company. How does the debt go uh, uh, measure up against that? Measure the financial strength. Look at their activity. Look at working capital. Make sure that they're all positive numbers. We're not going to go through each individual one, but just say, hey, make sure it's positive. Make sure it's in black and not in red. Can they meet obligations? Now, perhaps, uh, is there a danger they've got so many bank loans that the bank may pull the rug from under them and they can't carry on business? Just have a look at the size of, their, of how they are utilizing their overdraft facilities, if they are, or if they're operating on cash. Um, can they meet their obligations? Look at what those obligations are. Are they leveraged? To what extent? Um, look at indications. Look at how they're managing within an operating cycle. Is it a factor that they're, they're good time companies? There are many of those who fly when the economy is growing. Uh, at the moment, the economy is hardly growing. So check that out. How do they, rake, uh, how do they rank up against the longer term uh, operating cycle? Look at receivables, inventory, payables. Payables, I put their P&P. When pack and pick and pay started, Raymond Ackerman said, I'm going to be taking so much stock into my stores, uh, I'm only going to pay you, the suppliers, after three months. But I will pay, and I've got the capital. I can prove that I will. And the supplier said, listen, he's going to be taking so much, we'll accept that. And what did he do? He sold all those goods for cash. So where did the capital for running the company came from? From, from us, the customers. We financed his business. It was the best banking operation in the country. It hadn't been seen before, and that was why, at that stage, they proved to be a winner. However, all, all of the mighty go up and down, and they've been down a bit since then. Okay, these factors here point to operating efficiency. You don't want to get into a company that's not utilizing these factors properly and is operating inefficiently. That because they don't bring in their payments due in time, they're always having to run high overdrafts. Boy, there's going to be a, a crisis at some stage. Okay, so... Uh, that these, I said, uh, point to operating efficiency. The balance sheet, you know what it stands for. Very important. Read, read it, analyze it, appreciate it. But remember, it's only a one-day snapshot. Make sure you looked at last year's and that you have an idea of how it's developing 
for the coming year as well. I think that that really is, is, is important. And uh, that, that, those are just the fact, the, the points that I made. To sum up, appreciate the state of the economy, the state of the, econ- the, of the uh, sector in which you're operating, the st- that you're looking at the leading company, not just an also-ran. It's much better to hook on to the one that's, that, that's coming first than to the one that may or may not catch up. Chances are, are, are against them. And uh, similarly, if you're going short, it's the same sort of thing. You know, if the economy is booming, don't try and short the market because it's too high. Wait for it to turn and get your technical indicators. You know, that really is important. Um, and if you're going to short, don't go and short against a, a booming sector. There's always one. Rather look at those that are really struggling and may struggle a whole lot more because of uh, domestic or, or international markets and just make sure you pick that particular one. You know, I think that that is, to sum it up, really what I have to say. Don't, you don't have to go and get heavy textbooks on fundamental analysis, balance sheet uh, uh, analysis, so on. A little book like this called Common Sense About Shares. I've had it for about 40 years. The rules haven't changed. They're all the same rules, and that's, that's it. Stick to the basics, and you, you know, you'll find no doubt at all that, that, that you're likely to have a winning philosophy.